पेज नंबर 133 लेसन नंबर 10 द सर्मन एट बेनारस बिफोर यू रीड एक्टिविटी यूज अ डिक्शनरी और आस्क फॉर योर टीचर्स हेल्प एज यू डिस्कस द फॉलोइंग क्वेश्चंस इन ग्रुप्स नंबर 1 व्हाट इज अ सर्मन is it different from a lecture or a talk can this word also be used in a negative way or as a joke as in my mother's sermon about getting my work done on time number 2 find out the meanings of the words and phrases given in the box afflicted with be composed desolation lamentation procure be subject to number 3 have you heard of the sermons on the mount who delivered it who do you think delivered a sermon at banaras gautama buddha who lived between 563 bc and 483 bc began life as a prince named Siddhartha Gautama in northern India at 12 he was sent away for schooling in the hindu sacred scriptures and 4 years later he returned home to marry a princess they had a son and lived for 10 years as befitted royalty at about the age of 25 the prince here to four shielded from the sufferings of the world while out hunting chanced upon a sick man then an aged man then a funeral procession and finally a monk begging for alms these sights so moved him that he at once became a beggar and went out into the world to seek enlightenment concerning the sorrows he had witnessed he wandered for 7 years and finally sat down under a fig tree where he vowed to stay until enlightenment came page number 134 enlightened after 7 days he renamed the tree the bow tree tree of wisdom and began to teach and to share his new understandings at that point he became known as the buddha the awakened or the enlightened the buddha preached his first sermon at the city of benares most holy of the dipping places in the river ganges that sermon has been preserved and is given here it reflects the buddha's wisdom about one inscrutable kind of suffering kisa gotami had an only son and he died in her grief she carried the dead child to all her neighbors asking them for medicine and the people said she has lost her senses the boy is dead at length kisa gotami met a man who replied to her request i cannot give thee medicine for thy child but i know a physician who can and the girl said pray tell me sir who is it and the man replied go to salyamuni the buddha kisa gotami repaired to the buddha and cried kisa gotami repaired to the buddha and cried lord and master give me the medicine that will cure my boy the buddha answered i want a handful of mustard seed and when the girl in her joy promise to procure it the buddha added the mustard seed must be taken from a house where no one has lost a child husband parent or friend poor kisa gotami now went from house to house and the people pitied her and said here is mustard seed take it but when she asked did a son or daughter a father or mother die in your family they answered her alas the living are few but the dead are many do not remind us of our deepest grief and there was no house but some beloved one had died in it 
Kisa Gotami became weary and hopeless and sat down at the wayside watching the lights of the city as they flickered up and were extinguished again. At last the darkness of the night reigned everywhere and she considered the fate of men that their lives flicker up and are extinguished again. And she thought to herself, How selfish am I in my grief? Death is common to all, yet in this valley of desolation there is a path that leads him to immortality who has surrendered all selfishness. The Buddha said, The life of mortals in this world is troubled and brief and combined with pain. Now the glossary on this page. Sermon means religious or moral talk. Dipping places means bathing. Inscrutable means something which cannot be understood. Repaired. It is a stylistic use. It means went to. Valley of desolation means an area which is filled with deep sorrow. Mortals means those bound to die. Page number 135 For there is not any means by which those that have been born can avoid dying. After reaching old age, there is death. Of such a nature are living beings. As ripe fruits are early in danger of falling, so mortals, when born, are always in danger of death. As all earthen vessels made by the potter end in being broken, so is the life of mortals, both young and adult, both those who are fools and those who are wise, all fall into the power of death. All are subject to death. Of those who overcome by death, Depart from life. A father cannot save his son, nor kinsmen their relations. Mark. While relatives are looking on and lamenting deeply, one by one mortals are carried off, like an ox that is led to the slaughter. So the world is afflicted with death and decay. Therefore, the wise do not grieve, knowing the terms of the world. Not from weeping nor from grieving will anyone obtain peace of mind. On the contrary, his pain will be the greater and his body will suffer. He will make himself sick and pale, yet the dead are not saved by his lamentation. He who seeks peace should draw out the arrow of lamentation and complaint and grief. He who has drawn out the arrow and has become composed will obtain peace of mind. He who has overcome all sorrow will become free from sorrow and be blessed. Source Betty Renstor Value and Voice A College Reader Published in 1975 Now the glossary on this page Page 135 Afflicted with means affected by suffering or disease or pain. Lamentation It's an expression of sorrow. Thinking about the text. Number 1 When her son dies, Kisa Gotami goes from house to house. What does she ask for? Does she get it? Why not? Number 2. Kisa Gotami again goes from house to house after she speaks with the Buddha. What does she ask for? The second time around? Does she get it? Why not? Number 3. What does Kisa Gotami understand the second time that she failed to understand the first time? Was this what the Buddha wanted her to understand? Number 4. Why do you think Kisa Gotami understood this only the second time? 
in what way did the buddha change her understanding number 5 how do you usually understand the idea of selfishness do you agree with kisa gotami that she was being selfish in her grief page 136 thinking about language number 1 This text is written in an old-fashioned style for it reports an incident more than 2 millennia old. Look for the following words and phrases in the text and try to rephrase them in more current language based on how you understand them. Point number 1 Give thee medicine for thy child. Point number 2 Pray tell me. Point number 3 Kisa repair to the Buddha. Point number four, there was no house, but someone had died in it. Number five, kinsman. Number six, Mark. Part two. You know that we can combine sentences using words like and, or, but, yet, and then. But sometimes no such word seems appropriate. In such a case, we can use a semicolon or a dash. to combine two clauses she has no interest in music semicolon i doubt she will become a singer like her mother the second clause here gives the speaker's opinion on the first clause here is a sentence from the text that uses semicolons to combine clauses break up the sentence into three simple sentences can you then say which has a better rhythm when you read it the single sentence using semicolons or the three simple sentences for there is not any means by which those who have been born can avoid dying semicolon after reaching old age there is death semicolon of such a nature are living beings full stop speaking The Buddha's sermon is over 2500 years old. Given here are two recent texts on the topic of grief. Read the texts comparing them with each other and with the Buddha's sermon. Do you think the Buddha's ideas and way of teaching continue to hold meaning for us? Or have we found better ways to deal with grief? Discuss this in groups or in class. Now the examples The first example a guide to coping with the death of a loved one Martha is having difficulty sleeping lately and no longer enjoys doing things with her friends Martha lost her husband of 26 years to cancer a month ago Anya age 17 doesn't feel like eating and spends the days in her room crying her grandmother recently died both of these individuals are experiencing grief grief is an emotion natural to all types of loss or significant change page number 137 feelings of grief although grief is unique and personal a broad range of feelings and behaviors are commonly experienced after the death of a loved one point number 1 sadness this is the most common and it is not necessarily manifested by crying point number 2 anger this is one of the most confusing feelings for a survivor there may be frustration at not being able to prevent the death and a sense of not being able to exist without the loved one guilt and self reproach people may believe that they were not kind enough or caring enough to the person who died or that the person should have seen the doctor sooner next anxiety an individual may fear that she or he won't be able to care for herself or himself next loneliness there are reminders throughout the day that a partner family member or friend is gone for example 
meals are no longer prepared the same way phone calls to share a special moment don't happen next fatigue there is an overall sense of feeling tired next disbelief this occurs particularly if it was a sudden death helping others who are experiencing grief when a friend loved one or coworker is experiencing grief how can we help it helps to understand that grief is expressed through a variety of behaviors reach out to others in their grief but understand that some may not want to accept help and will not share their grief others will want to talk about their thoughts and feelings or reminisce be patient and let the grieving person know that you care and are there to support him or her now part 2 of the example good grief it is written by amitai edzioni soon after my wife died her car slid off an icy road in 1985 a school psychologist warned me that my children and i were not mourning in the right way we felt angry the proper first stage he said is denial in late august this year my 38 year old son michael died suddenly in his sleep leaving behind a 2 year old son and a wife expecting their next child there is no set form for grief and no right way to express it there seems to be an expectation that after a great loss we will progress systematically through the well known stages of grief it is wrong we are told to jump to anger or to wallow too long in this stage before moving towards acceptance page number 138 but i was and am angry to make parents bury their children is wrong to have both my wife and son taken from me for forever and a day is cruel beyond words a relative from jerusalem who is a psychiatrist brought some solace by citing the maxim we are not to ask why but what the what is that which survivors in grief are bound to do for one another following that advice my family close friends and i keep busy calling each other and giving long answers to simple questions like how did your day go today we try to avoid thinking about either the immediate past or the bereft future we take turns playing with max michael's 2 year old son friends spend nights with the young widow and will be among those holding her hand when the baby is born focusing on what we do for one another is the only consolation we can find writing write a page about 3 paragraphs on one of the following topics you can think about the ideas in the text that are relevant to these topics and add your own ideas and experiences to them number 1 teaching someone to understand a new or different idea number 2 helping each other to get over difficult times number 3 thinking about oneself as unique or as one among billions of others in this lesson what we have done narrated the story of the buddha and the advice he gave to the grief stricken woman what you can do number 1 read and discuss the following extract from khalil gibran's the prophet with the students joy and sorrow then a woman said speak to us of joy and sorrow 
and he answered your joy is your sorrow unmasked and the self same well from which your laughter rises was often times filled with your tears and how else can it be the deeper that sorrow comes into your being the more joy you can contain is not the cup that holds your wine the very cup that was burned in the potter's oven page number 139 and is not the lute that soothes your spirit the very wood that was hollowed out with knives when you are joyous look deep into your heart and you shall find it is only that which has given you sorrow that is giving you joy when you are sorrowful look again in your heart and you shall see that in truth you are weeping for that which has been your delight some of you say joy is greater than sorrow and others say nay sorrow is the greater but i say unto you they are inseparable together they come and when one sits alone with you at your board remember that the other is asleep upon your bed number 2 help students to read and memorize the following extract from tagore say not in grief that she is no more but say in thankfulness that she was a death is not the extinguishing of a light but the putting out of the lamp because the dawn has come page number 140 for an gregory This poem is a conversation between a young man and a young woman. What are they arguing about? Never shall a young man thrown into despair by those great honey-colored ramparts at your ear love you for yourself alone and not your yellow hair. But I can get a hair dye and set such color there brown or black or carrot. that young men in despair may love me for myself alone and not my yellow hair i heard an old religious man but yesternight declare that he had found a text to prove that only god my dear could love you for yourself alone and not your yellow hair this poem is written by william butler yeats william butler yeats who lived between 1865 and 1939 was an irish nationalist he was educated in london and dublin and was interested in folklore and mythology he won the nobel prize for literature in 1923 page number 141 glossary ramparts means the high wide walls around a castle or fort for example the ramparts of the red fort thinking about the poem what does the young man mean by great honey colored ramparts at your ear why does he say that young men are thrown into despair by them number 2 what color is the young woman's hair what does she say she can change it too why would she want to do so number 3 objects have qualities which make them desirable to others can you think of some objects like a car a phone a dress and say what qualities make one object more desirable than another imagine you were trying to sell an object what qualities would you emphasize number 4 What about people do we love others because we like their qualities whether physical or mental or is it possible to love someone for themselves alone are some people more lovable than others discuss this question in pairs or in groups considering 
points like the following. Number one, a parent or caregiver's love for a newborn baby, for a mentally or physically challenged child, for a clever child or a prodigy. Number two, the public's love for a film star, a sports person, a politician or a social worker. Number three, your love for a friend or brother or sister. Number four, your love for a pet and the pet's love for you. Now, number five, you have perhaps concluded that people are not objects to be valued for their qualities or riches rather than for themselves. But elsewhere, Yeats asks the question, how can we separate the dancer from the dance? Is it possible to separate the person himself or herself from how the person looks, sounds, walks and so on? Think of how you or a friend or member of your family has changed over the years. Has your relationship also changed? In what way? 